Of all professional sports, the NHL, hockey probably has the most conservative fan base. And owners. More than 75% of National Hockey League owners donate to Republicans. Phil Anschutz, for example, who's legitimately conservative, owns the LA Kings. He's a mega donor to the Republican Party. So it's a little weird, or maybe it's not weird at all, that the NHL has decided to push woke propaganda on its fans. And boy, is it. Gary Bettman, the commissioner of the NHL and league vice president Kim Davis, now say they want fewer white people playing hockey. This is blatantly false. In the ensuing soundbite Carlson plays, the NHL commissioner Gary Bettman is asked, what does progress look like in the next five years for the league? Bettman says that we become more reflective of the communities in which our teams play, preaching diversity. Davis, the executive vice president, social impact, growth initiatives, and legislative affairs, talked inclusion. Thus, Carlson viewed it as... So attacking white people. No, wrong. This is a staple of every Tucker Carlson show, okay? You pander to white fragility, emasculated with neo-Nazi dog whistles at every single turn of his show. It is totally immoral, by the way, but it happens a lot. And then they're getting even more esoteric. This is an actual tweet from the league, the NHL. Quote, trans women are women, trans men are men, non-binary identity is real. None of which is true, all of which is insane. Wrong again. Imagine hating people so much that you put a target on their backs for simply trying to exist. Keep in mind there is a reason why write-ups of Carlson's show exist, like this one via writer Dan Kennedy. So Theo Fleury is a hockey legend in Canada and the United States. He played in the league for a very long time. No doubt Carlson just learned who dude is. Um, what, what do you make of this? I mean, what, were race politics a big part of hockey when you were playing? Let's pause and focus on the framing of the question. The National Hockey League, since former player Akeem Aliyu came forward with allegations of racism with his former coach Bill Peters, who reportedly said, Hey, Akeem, I'm sick of you playing that N-word blank. I'm sick of hearing this N-word blank other N-word in the ass stuff. The league has simply started listening to their black players like that much, just like a few percentage points more. That's all that's happened. In 2020, seven NHL players formed the Hockey Diversity Alliance, which has a mission to eradicate racism and intolerance in hockey. After negotiating with the league, they blasted the NHL, which they should, saying, Unfortunately, the support we hope to receive from the NHL was not delivered, and instead the NHL focused on performative public relations efforts that seemed aimed at quickly moving past important conversations about race needed in the game. The league has made no effort to support its own black players, said one member. Also on the flurry front, right? He played in 1988. The question Carlson asked him is preposterous in nature, akin to another Tucker Carlson and Fox News favorite. When you were in the locker room, was this was there the kind of tension there now seems to be? I mean, a lot of the politics, as American politics always does, it revolves around race. Did you see that in the locker room when you were playing? Absolutely not. Hmm. I wonder why that can be. Back to Tucker and Flurry. But before we do, there's absolutely zero reason for Carlson and Fox News to put an Antifa logo up there. It's ludicrous. So clearly, you know, political forces hijack professional sports as a way to brainwash the young men who watch professional sports. That's, of course, the entire point of it. Strategic. My brother in Christ, every league is facilitated by owners who are pro-Trump, pro-right wing. Even the National Basketball Association, that is a target for Fox. During the 2020 election cycle, NFL owners did, well, as they always do. This is fallacy, as is almost everything on Tucker Carlson's show. But why does nobody push back? Like, no, you're not allowed to do this in professional hockey. It's about hockey, back off. Why does nobody say that? Well, I think it's a really, because we're so divided, Tucker, and 
uh, deep down hockey players are, you know, guys who are compassionate and empathetic and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just something that we don't want to get involved in. And, and, and it's, yeah. an, and it's an argument that, that we can't win. You know, Fox News Digital also ran with, but, but before I even show you that, take a wild guess at how they framed this discussion because it is the word of conservatism for the last, let's say, five years. It is a term that they have taken and transformed to mean like everything instead of the actual definition. Just take a guess at what that word is. Here it is. Former NHL player calls out the league for pushing woke agenda. Politics has no place in any sport. Woke, of course. Put it on anything and garner mindless conservative support. It doesn't matter to us who plays the sport, whether you're transgender, gay, or whatever. The reason why we play the game and the reason why the game is so amazing and so great is it's for everybody. Right? Not necessarily. Longtime NHL player Joe Thornton told the New York Times, if I were starting out to play hockey now, my parents wouldn't have been able to afford to put me in the sport. That's just the reality of it. Ice hockey travel teams, for example, can cost $10,000 or more per year due to equipment, facility costs, enrollment fees, and coaching. 35% of parents took on personal debt and 23% got a second job or worked overtime so their kids could play. The sport also comes with a major time commitment. 80% of the parents said they spend a weekly average of five hours or more at hockey-related activities, while 38% are at the rink for over eight hours each week. For many, it is flat out unaffordable. Wayne Simmons knows the 34-year-old who made his first appearance in 2008 for the LA Kings. Well, Simmons felt isolated as a lone black player. The cost is extremely high and it's not really manageable for most working class families to afford to put their kids in hockey, he said. Never mind if they had two kids or three kids that wanted to play the sport. Then there's Flurry's Hockey is for everyone that we see so many prominent players, executives, blah, 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 involved in hockey espouse. Which to be clear, it does sound great though. The Athletics' Mark Lazarus dispels this notion with statistics of just how exclusive the league is, coupled with history that should have been made many Many years ago, the league puts out its first diversity and inclusion report. The numbers are telling. According to the report, 83.6% of league and team employees identify as white, with just 3.74% identifying as black, 3.71% as Hispanic slash Latino, and 4.17% as Asian. Meanwhile, 36.81% of the league employees are women, and less than 4% of the league identifies as LGBTQ+. For comparison's sake, as of last year in the NBA, per the Institute for Diversity and Ethics in Sport, 82.4% of the players were people of color, fully half the coaches and half the GMs were people of color, and 32.5% of senior management were people of color. Also, 43.4% of employees in the league office were women as were 39% of team senior management. So when you see Bettman and co tout the, we want to serve as a reflection of society, just be a little cautious. These public gestures made to communities of color and photo ops under the banner of DEI do little to truly make the sport accessible beyond the affluent, mostly white suburbs. It's going to take massive investments and systemic change within the league and within its teams to make hockey look anything like the broader North American fan base it so desperately covets.